Hello everybody, my name is Nick, aka Loda Wombat. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I just wanted to give a little bit of context before we start this video. Uh, this is something that I'm starting to do on Mondays on my stream, uh, or other days if the guest needs to do it on other days. But what, we're, what I'm doing basically is interviewing small streamers, talking about streaming tips, what their tips would be for people, all that kind of stuff, hearing their story. This first interview that we did was super, super helpful. I think you guys will really enjoy it. It's with a guy called Luton Larry. All of his, his information will be down in the description uh, below, as well as my information. If you guys want to come and watch these interviews live, they're going to be every single week on Mondays, unless they're not, because uh, if the guests can't do it Mondays. So most likely they'll be, they'll be Mondays, but if not, then we'll, we'll announce that and make sure you guys know on the social media. So without further ado, let's get into this interview. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll send you right in. Bye. Uh, oh, my dude. goodness gracious. Well, hey, dude. Thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate you. You're beautiful. You're amazing. Uh, your community's here, dude. And they're like, hey, he's beautiful and sexy. They thought I was you at first. They were confused. There's and, no way, dude. You're too good looking. You're just too good looking. See, no I was way. thinking the other way around, you know? <laughs> I was thinking the other way around. But, dude, okay. So, um, hi. How are you? How are you feeling dude, today? I'm good. I'm good. Got to go to class here in a little bit. Um, like in a minute, right? Like, like one minute or something like that? Or <laughs> Yeah, I, can, I was just popping in to say hi. I, I actually can't stay, so I, uh, I'm going to go. <laughs> Perfect, dude. Perfect. Um, yeah, so let's let's kind of start off. We'll just kind of talk through, uh, you know, just a little bit about you and, and kind of learn that side of it uh, for the people who don't know you. And um, yeah, the goal here is today is just to really obviously learn quite a bit about you, but also learn about what your tips would be for streaming for people starting out or even just for uh, people who've already been going for a while. Um, but we'll find out all the like ins and outs of how you do things and stuff. And so, um, but to, to start off, I guess, like, what did you do before streaming? Like what kind of got you to this point and what do you feel like has prepared you for like streaming or things like that? Actually, it's funny, dude, because um, I played a lot of video games. There's like a few like T lemon. Uh, that's my cousin. I've known it like forever right we used to play like halo back in the day and like argue yeah. and he'd hit me over wanting to play and stuff like that but uh yeah i uh, i played video games for a while and then i got really serious into like fitness and stuff and i really just like didn't play games for a long time and then when fortnite came out i bought a pc i was actually playing on ps4 and i bought a pc and i started watching twitch because like i heard ninja's name actually and i started watching other streamers and stuff and i was like wow like what a what a dope thing to do you know what i mean like yeah Content creation is just like something completely different to be able to like call that your job. Like that's probably one of the best. I don't know a better job in the world, honestly. So mm. it's been really good, dude. Um, so I've been streaming on Twitch for about a year and a half ish. Yeah, I started really taking it serious um, November of 2018 and recently just became a full time creator. Um, I'm a full time student at Ohio State. And then, um, yeah. So I think I made the announcement back in December. I worked at Best Buy part time while I was in school and made the transition to do this as close to full time as possible. Dang. Okay. So you've been you've actually been going for like for a while. Like you've been you've been grinding out for I mean since 2018. That's I feel like I I meet a lot of people who have started in the last like six months to a year. You yeah. know, and not a lot of people who have like kept that kept it up for longer than that. You know, and so either people will start off or they'll kind of like just stop like they'll let the the whole like grind of it kind of just just take them over yeah. what what has been some of the the areas that where you've kind of like combated to be able to, to do it for this long you know i mean even with you being a streamer i see like you've been streaming for about what, like a year and a half close to it as well um not not even a year now? yet so i'm at like not i'm yet. at about like uh 10 months almost so i'm at about okay. there yeah so yeah i mean you always go through highs and lows on twitch yeah. like you will do absolutely amazing and it really gives you a lot of inspiration but you also have to like i realize too that you can't stay up forever and like it, that's the hard the hardest part to combat is when you start to see a little bit of a decline um and you just gotta like come through that i guess that's been my biggest challenge like when you start to grow and then slow down a little bit you know what yeah. i mean that's very hard to combat but you just have to keep like a positive mindset with it i guess is my biggest thing yeah so can you talk about like maybe a time when there was like a decline or, or even an increase, like, you know, kind of share a little bit of what's going on in your mind, like in those moments. And like, what, have you ever like contemplated stopping streaming or have you ever, has that ever been, been a thought in your mind? Yeah, man. Um, actually like last year. So like right around the time Ninja switched to Mixer, I was, uh, I had like experienced a really big dip in my channel. I was like, I probably went from like 11 to and keep keep in mind i haven't been streaming that long at this time yeah. but i went from like a, like 11 to 13 viewers down to like 
five or six and I was really, really discouraged. And I was like, man, I just like put too much into this and I'm seeing no return. And I was going to switch to Mixer and I decided not to just because I, uh, you know, I had a, a community established a little bit and I just had a lot of love for those people. And that kind of kept me going. And I kind of just put my head down, man, and and went into it with a positive mindset and tried to see, you know, what I could do to come through it. Because ultimately, people come back and watch you either because you're a great, you know, content creator. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Uh, <laughs> That's like, why I was people, like, dang, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people watch you for different reasons, you know, and uh, so I really kind of went back to the drawing board and I was like, you know, what can I do to be different or stand out? So, you know, I kind of just put my head down and started trying to make some positive changes, you know, whether that's just being a little bit more energetic or adding things to my stream to make them a little bit better and like cleaner. So, yeah, like I, I would say about a year ago, that dip really took a toll on me, but I'm glad I didn't quit. Yeah, it's it's kind of a it's kind of an inter interesting thing with Twitch, right? Because it's all numbers based, and it's it all it's very much um, your success is not only there for your viewing, but it's also there for other people's viewing. You know, right in front of your face with a with a viewer account or with subs or followers, yeah. whatever it is. And the fact that you can push through that, and the fact that you have pushed through that time, I mean, I've experienced that as as well. You know, as a streamer, you you. It's a roller coaster, yeah. dude. You experience dips and up and down. Up and down. Yeah. Um, but it seems like what you've done is you've allowed, you haven't allowed your environment or what's happening around you to really stop you from like staying laser focused on what you want to accomplish. And I think that's kind of the, brings me to my next question is like, what do you want to accomplish through streaming? And not only numbers wise or any of that side of things, but what, what makes you kind of get up and keep, keep hitting the go live button every single time you go, go to stream. Honestly, my biggest thing, dude, is uh, my community. Because obviously, I still uh, I still work at Best Buy. I'm like a seasonal employee. I could go there and work. Yeah. But, um, you know, I love my community so much. And that kind of just like, I guess, really makes me want to go live because I enjoy talking to them. Like, I could be in a bad mood or like upset, tired, whatever. But as soon as I go live, like, I always feel better. And I feel like it's a lot that way with a lot of people, too. Like, a lot of people go to Twitch for different reasons. You know what I mean? And a lot of times it just makes people feel better to have somewhere to go and people to talk to and friends and stuff necessarily when you can't get out of the house or just work too much. Um, and I gotta, I gotta give a big shout out to my boy T lemon in chat. Um, me and him like probably call it cause he started streaming a little bit after I did. Um, and that's one person I can call and like kind of lean on. Cause I, I feel like, you know, you've probably called people and been like, fuck dude, like my channel is like slowing down, like whatever it is. And, uh, like I've called him like plenty of times and been like, dude, I feel like I want to give up. And he's like, you know, dude, just keep going. Like you got something good. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. So it's great to have people around you like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think it, for me, that's like my brother. I'll go to him and be yeah. like, my stream's dead, dude. I don't know. what. <laughs> you know, like, I'll be like, go to him. he's like, dude, it's not, it's like, if you have a bad day, it's not a, like in terms of numbers, it's not the end of the world. It it's, happens, dude. It's a live stream and you're streaming for like five hours at a time. Like, there's no way for you to, people to always be there at every single moment. <laughs> He's like, just just keep moving. You're yeah, like, and and keep, yeah. and keep, keep up with the other things and stuff. Um, and that's what people have to realize, too. Like, people have lives, you know? And and that's yeah. one of the things, like, at, over time, you start to realize, like, you're like, once you really think about why people aren't there, it's not because necessarily because they don't, like, support you. Like, people have things going on, and they can't always be there 100% of the time. Like, if they did, I mean, you might as well start paying them. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's where you kind of you kind of start to see, like, Yes, I think all of our goals is to create a stream that people can't miss, you know? Like, we don't we want them to not miss it, or they, we want them to be, like, pulling it up when they're at some other thing, and they're like, oh, I have to see this part or whatever. Yeah. But realistically, it's something to be built, not something that's just going to happen, like, overnight. And I, I think that's what I hear you kind of saying. Yeah, essentially, yeah. I mean, just... You, that's, uh, that's the beauty of being a small, like, content creator, dude. Like, not one of the big wigs. Like, that's... You get that deep, close, personal connection with people that you know, like Tifu or any of those guys like don't get. Yeah. And with that comes like low times. So it's just all about how you come out of it. Yeah, absolutely. I agree hundred percent, man. Well, I think where, uh, where you kind of see like streamers going is that they can either do one or two things. If numbers drop or no, or wherever they're at, they can either, you know, just quit and be like, screw it. Uh, it's just not working out for me. I've heard that phrase a lot. Like even recently, like, Oh, it's just not working yeah. out for me. And for me, I, I haven't put like a timeline on what I'm doing. What I've kind of started to do is just re look at like what I'm doing. So I guess that's kind of my next question is what do you do to combat that? Or, or, or even like, what do you, what do you just do on your stream and what are some things that you do differently? Um, what games you normally play that kind of stuff. 
I think a lot of the people that watch my stream will say that I just uh I always come into it with a ton of energy. <laughs> yeah. They say I'm like they say I'm like super hype. So I guess that's like uh that's how I like to be. I like to be very upbeat and uh I like to have a lot of energy. But I've also like started to incorporate lots of different things. Like I even like aesthetics wise, I don't know who follow me, but like I, I have my alerts set up through a third party app. So like when people follow me or sub, donate, like whatever it is, like my lights will go off. I have like a sub spin wheel so they get different prizes. Um and I also try to like, I feel like my community gives me a lot and you know, it's like more than I ever could expect. And so I like to do like giveaways at certain milestones. Mm. Um, so like right now I was doing like uh, like a $50 giveaway for hitting 2000 followers. Um, the growth lately has just been really good for me. And like, I just, I'm blown away by it. So I try to do what I can to give back to my community as well. Like they do so much for me. And I feel like that's what it's all about, man. You got to treat people how you want to be treated. Yeah. And it seems like, any conversation I've ever had with you on, on streaming or even really like any conversation in this whole, this whole realm, it's been always kind of comes back to that, right? Like is how can you give back to the people who are giving to you in a lot of ways and not even like only financially, but like time. And, yeah, and, exactly. and so talk through some of those strategies, like kind of get deeper into those, some of those strategies that you have to really give back to your community. And um, I know you do like things like, you know, like community based streams, like you'll even do like a whole stream where you're just hanging out with community and stuff like that. So yeah, kind of just talk through some of those ideas that you have. Yeah. So every Friday I do a, a community day. And basically what I, I decided is like, I personally, I like when I, I play a lot of Fortnite, like I would say Fortnite was my bread and butter for a while. I've started branching out a little bit. But that's just a game where if you're playing squads, it is so hard for me personally to focus on like communicating with my teammates as well as like, I don't know, like talking to chat and still trying to focus on the three other people rushing at me. Yeah, so I don't yeah. get a lot of time to spend with my chat and I play a lot of solos or like random duos and stuff. Um, so I, I created that day kind of to, you know, be closer to my chat and be able to do things with them. So we'll do like viewer games. I have like Jackbox party. We'll do Jackbox party and, you know, drink beer, whatever we're doing. Um, and we also usually set up a discord video call. So I'll, at the end of the stream or like, I don't know, a couple hours before it ends, I'll usually hop in there with uh, a bunch of my mods and some other people and we'll kind of just BS and have fun with that. But I, I just feel like the biggest tip I could ever give is just like build a great relationship with your community because that's when you get people who are loyal to you because they see that you actually care about them and you're not just like a number to them. The people who like, I see, I don't know if you've ever seen this on Twitter or stuff. Like, there was this one streamer I saw and she was like, hadn't had a, a sub in like 15 minutes. And she's uh, like, yeah, yeah. what the heck is going on guys? I'm sitting here on this camera and nobody's donating any money to me. And that is just like, bro, people see right through that dude. Like you are not going to succeed ever. If that's how you want to treat people. That's like the worst mindset. That is the worst mindset to ever have. Yeah. It becomes all, all like a financial thing, right? Like who, cause you're expecting people to hang out with you for multiple hours and, <laughs> and then, you say that like, like, like yeah. for me, that's just such a weird thing to say yeah. because realistically this thing is like, yeah, I mean, streaming has been around for a little bit now, but not really in the grand scheme of things around for a long time. And so you're going to take this like new idea of streaming, sitting in front of a, a camera, playing video games or, or even just chatting or whatever it is. And then now you're going to expect people to pay for something that's like in the, and the whole like core of it is free. <laughs> like, yeah, it's just like exactly. a really weird thing. And at the end of the day, like if you're a streamer and you consider it, I mean, if you don't just do it for a hobby and you consider it like a, uh, like a job, you know what I mean? It's uh, at the end of the day, like that is your job. And I think people see that. So I've never been one to like ask for subs or donations. Like I have a sub goal that I put on my Twitch every day. And that's just basically what I need to float by and continue what I do for a job. You know what I mean? But I never have asked people ever to like donate me money or anything. Cause I feel like that's wrong, dude. Like, the amount of time that they actually put in with it. Like I have people that have watched my stream for like 15 days. Like that's so long, dude. And for me, like, you can't, you just can't expect people to give you money like that. If people are willing and able to, um, obviously they keep it going, but like, you can never, you can never just expect people to give you money because you decided to go live and play video games. You know what I mean? Yeah. So with that, with the whole like full time thing, when you were making that decision to go full time, were you uh, like pretty confident in that? Were you, was it kind of something that came up or were, was it just like, was it like a, a decision you had been wanting to make for a long time or, or what was kind of, if I'm, your, being, your if I'm being honest, dude, it was, uh, I was terrified to be honest um, because I had a job where I had stable income and stuff. Yeah. So basically what had happened was like, I've been with Best Buy for a while and uh, you had to, they, they changed something in the policy to where um, you had to work a certain amount of hours to keep your part-time availability. So I was working like every single weekend. 
and I hadn't hit my hours. So the um, system automatically rolled me over to a seasonal employee. And I think I have to work like 24 hours and a quarter or something now. But after that happened, um, I was at a really good place with my stream and my community. And I was, like I said, I was terrified, um, but I took a, I took a leap of faith into something that I was passionate about for the first time in my life. And honestly, it's worked out even like better than I could have expected. So, I mean, at the end of the day, sometimes you just have to weigh your passion with your happiness. Like I'm so much happier now. This is what I do um, four to five times a week. Like I'm my, my mental health is just so good. Like it's been nothing but like a blessing, dude. Yeah. And on the, on the mental, mental health side of things, that's something that really interests me with like streaming, especially with full-time streamers, because not only now have you made it like a job, right? But you've also made it now something that's going to be, um, it's going to be a little bit stressful at times because you've got to hit a certain point in order to really make enough income. Right. And, and so I guess the initial jump, cause I did that same exact jump, you know, from like a sales job that's making way more money than I'm making now to like yep. do something that I really loved. It's, it's definitely like, there's the initial like anxiety and the initial like stress of that. But is there anything like ongoing for you that where you're like, okay, I got, like it, hitting rent or hitting certain, certain areas that it, has it been something that's been pretty easy or has it been something that's kind of like, you know what, I'm just going to trust that this is going to be something that will work out. I, uh, I try to make sure I was set to the point where I wouldn't like, I, like I said, I have my job. If I really like just, if it just did not work out and I couldn't pay my bills, like I would have to go back to work, but I would say it's worked out really well for me to be at least be able to float and get by. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that, and I think as a, anybody in here, that's like a content creator, like that's the, I mean, even, I think you asked me earlier where I see streaming going. Um, and I'm not really even looking to be like a, like a Tifu or anything. Like as I get older, I'm starting to see that like your happiness is something that you don't hate doing. Right. Yeah. Like after you do, it's like you did your sales job, right. I've done sales for, uh, three, like three years total. I have like three years of sales experience and yeah. like, sales is a very, very mentally draining job because you have to not only think about how you're going to phrase things, but you also have to kind of like pick another person's brain as to what they're looking for. It's like a puzzle. And uh, that takes a toll on you and eventually gets repetitive after you say the same thing like 100,000 times. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think it's uh, it's all about balance, dude. It's all about balance. And when you find something like I'm like I said, I'm a full time student as well. But Finding something that uh, you're able to to do that you love and also get by in life, like you can't really ask for anything more, man. Yeah, and and it's funny because I I don't know if you you find this, but I think sometimes it feels like either like my friends or or like people I've known in the like like known in the past or whatever, or people I worked with or whatever, they think it's like oh it's just playing video games, or even like people <laughs> watch like a stream, right? Like they think oh like it's just playing video games. Yes, I saw dude. you tweeted out today about something about content creation and just being like. Uh, the idea of like, yes, oh, it doesn't dude. stop. Like, it's not just streaming. It's not, it's all, all encompassing. So on the time management so side much. of things, like, how do you, how do you split your time between, you know, how, how many hours do you stream normally? Um, I would say I stream anywhere from 25 to 30 hours a week. So n not quite full time, but when you put in, when you factor in the amount of time I spend on social media, editing videos, like I definitely hit that like 32 hour cusp, like a hundred percent. Yeah, so um, like, so like, you'll stream like a certain amount of hours, right? And then, so how do you kind of split up between which social medias do you split up, uh, like putting your time towards? Like, what are, what are your most important ones outside of you know streaming and stuff like that? I would say personally, Twitter. Like, I one thing I don't like, I have an Instagram too. Um, the one thing I don't like about Instagram is that you can't post links in your stories, like when you're going live and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so Twitter is really big for me. I basically only use Twitter and um twitch like religiously i have a tiktok i have a, like 7.6k on tiktok but that's a really hard platform and it's all algorithm based and after you like after you get like factor in the time of everything else you're doing it's just like where do you have the time to do anything else you know what i mean absolutely so it's just honestly if i could say anything i would just say find what works for you dude um i make little short videos on twitter like usually like a minute to two minutes long and I, it's usually like a five types of something. I kind of just like meme on uh, meme on things of streaming or gaming. So like I did like a five types of simps. Um, so it was like it was like a whole like simp city video. Yeah. yeah. So like yeah, did you see that? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I just like I do things that kind of just meme on like uh, streaming as a whole, like things that I find funny or just like interesting. But that's helped me a lot in like getting those videos out. That's helped me a lot to meet a bunch of different other people that like appreciate the content side of it and what I do. 
But that tweet I put out today was like, people, I, I feel like the, for the content creators in here, and I'm sure a lot of you guys can even like attest to that. It's like the amount, like streaming is the easy part, right? Yeah. It's real. It's easy to go live and and play your game and have a good time. But when you're done with that, you still have to take care of your life, your family, like work. You I mean content creation? YouTube takes forever. Like uh, I don't even have that big of a following on YouTube, and I put a ton of time into editing my videos, you know. And it doesn't really, it doesn't really take off as much because it's very hard to get on YouTube. But the the aspect of just spending your time outside of the stream is so like overwhelming sometimes. It's like because you're in your mind, you're always like, "What am I gonna do? Where am I going next?" Like, do you feel the same way? Absolutely, yeah. When you look at when you look at the time that's spent outside, it's not even necessarily the time even working on stuff. Sometimes, like it's even brainstorming what to do like on stream or brainstorming what to do for a YouTube video yeah. like that. There's so much time that goes into those areas, but also for me, there's, there's some, some things that's, that creep in on the, like the mental health side of things, because I feel like I'm not doing enough most of the time. Absolutely. And I don't know if that's dude, true for you where, where you yourself. feel like you're like, Oh shoot, I should be doing this. And I could have, I could grow here if I did this. And you're like, <laughs> I, I, it's sometimes you gotta, you gotta kind of balance out. Okay. This is going to be where I'm focusing. And these are the things I'm going to focus on. These other things would be so great if I could do them, but I legitimately can't do them great and I can't do them well. So I'm just going to focus on these areas. Uh, did we just become best friends, dude. Oh, we just did. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, this man just walked in. Yeah, dude. Uh, I'm, I'm like, I'm like super hard on myself. And, uh, and it, I, I think it could be overwhelming at times because I, I try to do too much and there's just not enough time in the day to do everything. Like, you know, I like if I if I put in too much time within my content creation, I'll notice my grades start to slip or yeah. any other thing, man. And it's uh it's real tough. And then but we were talking about earlier, like staying relevant, man. Um, that anxiety of like if you do see things start to slow down, what can you do to stay different and stay relevant? Like what things can you bring in? I think that's a that's a huge thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's and that's the thing, relevancy, right? Like it's funny because there's like there's thoughts that can creep in for streamers and it's a very serious thing. Like the whole, the, the whole mental health side of things. And I have some like different stuff coming out soon. That's going to be kind of talking about that side of things for streamers, but it's, it's a pretty deep issue for people when your whole like job is based on if people like, like really you can, it's all connected to who you are, you know? And so when Absolutely. you, when you do something that's connected to who you are and you can't separate those two things, it becomes very uh, dangerous because when, when you do well at it, it's great. And it's this like ultimate high. But then when you don't, when it's like not doing great based on numbers uh, and what other people kind of like say, like, this is how you do great. When it's not, when it's not doing great on those side of things, then all of a sudden now you're, you're at an all time, all time low. Right. And it, and it just becomes, it becomes this big roller coaster of emotions. And if you can't like really level that, that out at some point, that's why I, I believe that people burn out. Um, that's why I believe, that, especially small creators, it's really, it, it happens a lot faster with small creators because when you're streaming to like, you know, two people at some points, like it, it can be very disheartening when you're looking at, especially when you're looking at streamers and your favorite streamers are like Tim the Tap Man or these guys, you know, yeah, like these big yeah. guys. And so I think, uh, and we're, we're going to transition a little bit here in a second to like, kind of like tips and tricks and like how to grow like a stream and how to like go, go towards, towards that route and when things that you've seen, uh, but I think that's a really important thing. And I think what's what really can di differentiate somebody and keep them coming into each stream excited and passionate like you do. And I'm not sure if there's things that, that you can share on this, but making sure you're filled up and you're consistently in a great uh, like like state state of mind and just really a state of mind like in terms of mindset for stream, but also personally and all these kinds of things. Uh, if you can figure that out, how to stay like filled up in that sense then you can really go out and inspire and motivate other people. And I think, I, I don't know if you have anything to say on that side of things, but. It, and I think as like content creators, we, uh, we still have to take a step back sometimes. That's what even like T will tell me, right? Like we, uh, we get so like, like you said, that ultimate high, like, right. You start averaging 30 to 40 viewers and your streams taking off and like, we start seeing that. Right. And then your stream does slow down and you only have two to three people talking. Sometimes we, uh, you got to take a step back and be like these people stuck around because they like you and they're here for a reason you know um and that that could be hard to do from a number standpoint yeah. i try to keep my viewer count off that way if like i am having a bad stream it doesn't get to me because people see that dude yep. um I, I try to go in with the mindset that if i can't if i can't be in a good mood and put out the best possible content that i can 
I don't want that to reflect on me or or be an image of what I represent because I just try to stay positive and, you know, spread, spread kind words and stuff like that to other people. And I feel like that's so huge. You like, you'll see streamers sometimes it looks like they're just not having a good time at all. And they have that grind, grind, grind mentality. And you can kind of see that and they're like, they get low energy, frustrated with the game, which is, you know, getting frustrated with the game is normal. It's just, it's all about how you, like you said, you keep that, that positive mindset. I don't know. And I would say the hardest thing to come out of on Twitch is that low because you have to figure out what can you do outside of what you have already done to stay relevant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, definitely. And, and it's it's funny that you say that you can you can feel that, right? And and I'm I'm no I'm I'm like no no nowhere near perfect on this side of things like where sometimes you just have a that, that day and then that's all like if you're having a bad day, that's always the day where it hits like where you have like lower numbers and like you're like yes, you can have dude. that day where you're like you just don't hide it well or like yeah. you really don't have that right mindset to really like push through, you know? Yeah. And absolutely. I think uh but I, you're right, dude. I, I think it, it, it comes down to like can you still perform the same way when you have, you know, two people who are stoked on being there when and when you have like thirty, you know, and I think that's that's something that a lot of small streamers don't don't really get. Because a lot of times people don't realize that people pop into your stream when you're just starting out for a second, you know, like they, they'll pop in for like three seconds and they'll see if they like you and then they'll pop out, you know, and depending on what they see. Yeah. And if you're just sitting there like a zombie looking at the screen, it's like, <laughs> it, it's not going to be much, you know, and I, I think Thanks. people don't understand that. And so, um, one more thing actually, before we get into the, the, like the tips and tricks side of things, you you're you're affiliated with uh five one seven is it five one seven or five five seventeen because I feel like five one seven is it but I don't know it, yeah it's five one seven right, perfect um, perfect yeah so I know like a lot of people will look at it I know I did personally before I joined I, I asked uh Trepidy. I think he came in here earlier I don't know if he's still in here um I was like what does five one seven stand for and he was like it's an area code in Michigan and I was like okay and I was like at first I was like okay that's kind of cool like what, what does that represent so like the whole meaning behind the org is kind of with the 517, it's an area code based out of Lansing, Michigan. And uh, it kind of just represents like, no matter where you're from, like no matter how small of a town you are, if you put in the work, like you can make something of yourself and put your city on the map. You don't have to be like a Cali, New York, LA, like whatever. Yeah. Like you, every person has started out from nothing, like myself included. I Like I told you in the beginning, like I, I literally didn't know a single person on Twitch, dude. I didn't know how to network, nothing. And um, I've built up pretty much from the ground up and you know it's it's a ride dude it's a ride but yeah um i had noticed 517 like last june and uh and i've been following him for a long time and then trepid actually reached out to me and one thing i really liked about the org itself so i I always will say like even i was kind of looking at another team as well um i was really indifferent about mixing my brand just because like i was seeing personal growth within myself yeah. And um, I was really I was kind of indifferent about mixing my brand as well. But it just depends on who you are. But it's been nothing but a positive experience for me. Um, I've met so many amazing people through it. And, you know, it, I, uh, I'm the stream lead. So I, I help uh, do with like recruitment with people and uh, kind of just give some opinions on like thoughts on the Oregon stuff. And I get to help manage my team. And uh, it's just been nothing, nothing short of amazing, dude. And like people, I feel like a lot of people who are smaller creators, like, see like phase or like soar dare whatever and they want to rush into a team because they see like a team's clouded yeah but a lot of times it is better to establish yourself first you know what i mean yeah and uh i, I feel like if you get into the right org with the right type of branding it it is nothing but a positive thing and like that could be the difference of you it could or could not be the difference of you making it or not making it it's just it's all even in life, man, it's about who you surround yourself with. And like my whole team or is just like, even our Fortnite side, they're all like crazy good players or like good content creators. So it just, I, I would say my biggest thing on that is just really put a lot of thought, but because if you're in a, joining an org, you need to be putting your all into it. You shouldn't half it because the org's only going to be as good as you are. So I really like to, I really like to see people who thrive and do well in it and be like, give their all, you know? Yeah, it's it's an interesting thing, right? Because there's there's orgs like po popping up every day, right? Like there's like random yeah. ones that like, and then you find out the owner's like ten years old, and you're like, okay, I don't know if I should join this org. <laughs> you know, like you start yeah. to, you start to see yeah. like you start to realize like, okay, there's there's orgs that are popping up every day, but there's not a lot of orgs doing it well, you know. And that's mm -hmm. that's the thing is, from my conversations with you, like even even just hearing about like five one seven and whatnot, you start you start to see like 
you connected with this team really, really well, but also they've become almost like a, like, like really like friendships that you have to keep pushing you through. And, and, and you guys are like pushing off of each other as well. It's really, really cool. And, and so that's something I noticed when you guys recently did um, your like cash prize tournament. I thought that was really cool to see like the interaction between you and your other like your, I guess you would call it like teammates, right? Oh. Yeah, they're my teammates. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure. What, I don't know, but 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 you you could see the interaction between you guys and and see how really how close you guys have, be, have started to become through this whole through the whole journey of like going together, you know. And I think I don't. Know, I've been I have been a little bit like skeptical about orgs for for quite a long time and like really like unsure yeah. about orgs because of like how much are they helping the, the small streamer and how much is the small, small streamer actually helping them, you know? Um, and how mutual is it? But I think what's really been really cool is to see uh, a team like five, one seven do that. Well, because there's a lot of teams yes. out there that yeah. are just not, they're either like screwing over like small creators and just have like a million like team members. And they're like, Oh, we're all supporting you guys. And it's like, <laughs> You have a million people like on here, basically. Well, and, with, and that's yeah. what I try to do differently is like a stream lead is uh, I I really feel like the org should benefit the the creator equally, right? Yeah. It shouldn't be like the org just backpacking off of a streamer or or like a, a player backpacking off the org. I feel like everybody should put in their weight equally and live up to the same standards, no matter who you are. You know what I mean? Like rocking a thousand viewers, you're rocking like fifty viewers, twenty. Like you should have the same standards if you're going to be a part of the team. And you should like you should be able to show like as much love as they show you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I agree with you, dude. Uh, I was really skeptical about orgs at first too, and I wasn't rushing into one. But like I said, I five one seven has been great, dude. Shout out five one seven. Shout out Logan, dude. <laughs> yeah, and, and I guess it it is actually a really good transition because if if like being the stream lead, I'm sure like if people came to you with you know, Hey, how do I get this? How do I get my stream growing or how do I get my stream moving forward? I'm sure you'd be, be able to help in a lot of those ways. Um, but I guess in terms of like tips and tricks that you have for streaming first, first off, we're going to get pretty practical. Um, and then I do want to dissect a little bit more of like the mindset side of things, just cause that really excites me and, and hearing other people's like what process you kind of go through to keep going, like keep going live and keep keeping that energy level high. Um, but on the practical side of things, if somebody came to you and said like, Hey, I'm going to be, we're going to, we're going to kind of go from like starting a stream, but also like maybe a stream in decline. We'll kind of do those two, two different scenarios. But when you're starting a stream out, like when you're just brand new, what would be like one to two, like very practical, uh, tips that you would give somebody, uh, when they're starting out? I got the first one off the top of my head. You ready? Yeah. Uh, don't do follow for follow and don't do lurk for lurk. <laughs> okay. That's, yeah. Uh, break yeah, that down. Break that down. Uh, like why, why do you think I, I 100% agree with you, but why why do you think that? <laughs> like, why would that okay. be? Okay, all right. So here, off the bat, dude, uh, the people who are doing that are, the people that you're meeting that do that, first of all, are literally doing that for the same reason you're doing it, for, like, personal growth. There's no, it's only mutual. It's not to, like, help you out because they like you, right? So if you're doing a lurk for lurk or a follow for follow, yeah, like, you might have two, 3,000 followers, but at two or 3,000 followers, you should not be averaging two to three viewers because you, by that point, if you do it organically, you should be, you should be like averaging, you should have built relationships with people. That's 2000 people you've come across to build relationships with. And you're like, and it happens, right? We've talked about that. It dips, but on average, you should have way more, you should have way more drive to want to go out and meet people than just do the follow for follow thing. I've always like, since I started, that's like my biggest thing is like, don't do that. Um, I've, everything I have is, has been straight organic through the ups and the downs. So and I really believe in that because when you go to your Twitch analytics and you look at everything, you're like, dang, okay, so this is exactly what it is. It's nothing like fudged. Like this is how I'm doing as a creator and lurk for lurk. If those people don't come back and lurk, you might be averaging, you know, 40, 50 viewers one day, but if they don't come back, you're right back down. And it's not active chatters. You go for Twitch partner. Twitch is like, Hey, yeah, you have a lot of like average viewers, but nobody's talking in your chat. What's up. And I think just being able to the best part about being a small creator is like meeting people. Right. Like, uh, I think, dude, you randomly came in one night and on a raid, you hit me with like a fat raid one night. I don't even think I had like met you before. No, and, no, I, uh, I think, I think it was random too. Like, I think it was, I was, was kind of just going through, like just wanted to raid somebody else kind of like around where I was at, you know? Yeah. And, and just like, I saw, I saw, I basically just saw the stream quality and was like, oh, this guy seems pretty dope. Let's go. 
And so yeah. then, we, then that's what I met. It's pretty cool. And that's, and that's literally what it's all about, dude. Like building those types of relationships and meeting new people. Like that's how you make friends. And like, that's how you meet longtime viewers, like whatever it is. So like the, the, the initial stages of Twitch sucks, you know, it's very slow and it's hard to come up and it's hard to meet people. But once you push past that, like, it's so, so rewarding, dude. Yeah. It sounds like you're kind of like what I'm hearing you say too is, is do things without expecting like a, a return from somebody. And I Bingo. think it, it sounds like, like whenever, whenever you're like doing something with your own ulterior, ulterior motive on Twitch, it's kind of crazy, but because it's a live streaming platform and not like an edited video, people can tell when you're doing that. Like people can hundred percent tell when you're in it for your, like, obviously we're in it for own gain. Like we, we want to get gain our, like grow our channel, stuff like that. But when you're like using people, people can feel that not only like when you go live, but also like when you jump into somebody's chat and it feels like you're using them. Yeah. It, it comes off it, like they can read like right through that text and see it. And so it's, it's something you got to really check yourself. Am I doing this it, so that I can gain or am I doing this so that like we all can, can, can move forward, you know? And so. I think even starting off in the beginning, I think every single person has been guilty of it. Like oh, yeah. you do, like you, you do support somebody like you like their content, but you subconsciously go in there with the mindset like hey um if i watch this person they're gonna come back because they stream and they're gonna watch me and that becomes like a lurk for lurk type thing yeah so i've just gotten to the point where like i do support people and i appreciate what they do but i like when i have the time i try to support the people i i really support not people that i think are gonna come back and like you know obviously you go through a low on that time and you'll never see those people come back right yeah. but i mean and at the end of the day it's back to that mental health thing like you got to watch people that um you i lost your video i, th I think my camera i think my camera died dude <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, dude. <laughs> all right i think it overheated dang D mirrorless camera dude okay i'm back um but yeah it just i i think just being authentic and people people see authenticity and it's just being as authentic oh i got to turn my air conditioner on sorry <laughs> it's all good no it's all good man <sighs> Yeah, I, uh, I moved my streaming room, and uh, it gets super hot in here. My camera doesn't like it. Dude, mine's the same way, bro. It gets so hot in my room. All right. But, yeah, um, authenticity is, like, the, uh, is the best thing, I would say, out of everything. Just, like, be genuine with people, and people will be genuine with you. And I think that's the centerpiece whenever people talk about, like, follow for follow and lurk for lurk for sure. Like, because I 100% yeah. agree with you. And any, like, streamer who's, like, like done this for a little bit they realize how that does not work you know and, and like it's it's one of the worst ways to grow a community yeah you'll get like a whole, whole bunch of followers or whatever yeah. but then i mean nobody stops by <laughs> so it defeats the whole purpose and, and then you have like the people that'll come in and they'll be like uh you'll be like hey man what's up they're like nothing dude just about to go start streaming <laughs> with all my people dude <laughs> I'm about to start streaming right now. Oh, and you're like, okay, I don't think I asked that, but uh, that's great, dude. I hope you have a good stream. Or yeah, or like, or like I'm live right now. It's like, well, why are you oh, here? Why are you watching me? Why are you here right <laughs> now? Shouldn't you be chat? entertaining people right now? Like, oh, like dude. yeah, it, it it's, that's one of the funniest things. I, I created a list recently, or it was like a couple months ago where I was yeah. like, top like five things not to say in freaking in someone's chat. <laughs> that was Bash, on it for sure. It's so yeah. funny dude, when people say that. But and yeah, I think on Twitch, I think that is like, cause there's some people who I feel like you, I feel like it's all intent, right? Like you can kind of, by knowing a person, how long you've known them, it's a difference of saying, Hey, what's up? How have the streams been? Like, what's going on with you? Or just like pop it in there and being like, go on live, dude. What's up, brother? Yeah. You know what I mean? And, yeah, uh, and you're like, so you look at their like chat log, you know, and it's just that same exact thing, like over and over again. You're like, you're like, dude, oh, wow, I, this is all you say in my, in my stream. Interesting. And it's, I don't know why it just, that, that's, that's probably the one thing on Twitch that irritates me the most is when people do that. Cause it's not, it's not like they're doing, they're doing it for an intent for themselves. Like I've already said. Um, well, yeah, you seem like somebody like similar, similar to I, how I am like, yeah, I want to build like my stream up and, and, and grow my stream and all this kind of stuff and grow my community, not only in number, but also deepen it. But I think also I, I do believe in the idea of like growing Twitch as a yeah. whole, like, and I, and I really do love this platform a lot. And so I believe in like the idea of growing this platform and making it a healthier platform, not only in number, but also deepening it and, and making it a better place. Oh, and so I, I think it's because that, that benefits everybody, right? When that happens, but it, it's just funny when, 
people do that, it just <laughs> it just is complete it's opposite. Like, but most of the time, it's like really movie. young people who don't understand, yeah, you yeah. know. But I think it's I, I try to educate people. Like when that happens, I'll, uh, what Same. I'll say it, the the like basically the like script that I have for that is is pretty much, hey, like I don't really care that much. Like I'm not gonna be here and, and be all pissed off because I get what what you're trying to do. But but in some people's chats, that might look like self or like self promotion. And so you might want to be careful. And they're like, oh. some people are like, oh, I had no idea, which maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But other people are like, oh, okay. And they're, they're already gone. They're already off. The, <laughs> you know, they're already gone. Yeah, after they, they, they just said wanted that. to say they were going live and they dipped out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think, but, you know, it, it, it's something that's that definitely needs to be said because it really does come down to like, if you're trying to actually grow your stream, you need time. You don't need, facts. it's not going to happen overnight and it probably won't happen tomorrow. But if you keep pushing and keep pressing, like maybe, and, and le- I love that you said this, the whole idea of like, I don't want to be Tifu, you know, I don't want to be this, I don't need to be this huge, huge streamer, but really like you're looking to grow at, stead- at a steady pace and just like take care of the people who are there. And that is a really, really healthy way to look at it. And I also think that like creators as a whole, I think like some people get in this mindset, like to where they're like, oh, either one or two scenarios, right? They either get too big, they start growing faster than the other people, and they're like, hey, like, I can't be around here anymore. I have to go with people my level. Or B, you start growing fast, and people are like, well, shoot, like, he's not as active with me because his chat's moving faster. Um, and that's, you know, that's a tough thing to see. Um, just like, it sucks losing a part of your community for like one of two reasons, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I, th- that's the thing, though, too. Like, I think about who I watch, right? Because sometimes yeah. when I get discouraged, like, maybe there's someone who I, like, I really like having around, you know, and I like, you sometimes you feel like you're giving so much and then all of a sudden just someone just leaves and you're like, Oh, okay. It's cool. You know, whatever. Like you haven't seen them in a few months or whatever. Yeah. And I, for me, I started to realize like, well, when I watch streams, like sometimes I watch a streamer for a while and I really get like, really enjoy the time. And, and then all of a sudden I find myself, Oh shoot, I haven't watched them in like a month, you know? Yeah. And yep. so it's just how, how it works with everybody. And, but the hard part is like when it happens to us, like I think I take it pretty personal, you know? Cause I'm like, man, I really want to create like a place that people love to be here, you know, yep. consistently. But I think I also probably have to be more realistic with myself, you know, like, you know, people are going to have more time at certain times or people are going to remember me sometimes and they're not going to remember me other times, you know, (laughs) it's just how it works. And I'm also the type of person, like, if you reach out to me, like, I don't don't ignore people ever. Like, if you reach out to me and you're like, hey, like, what are you doing, like, to help? What what are you doing? What can you help me with? Like, I'm always going to respond. And I, I just feel like there's nothing more rewarding, like, if you go in with like, even if it's like a 20, 30 person raid, right. On somebody who maybe hasn't even hit affiliate yet or anything and seeing their face light up, like on a, on a big raid like that. Like to me, that's the most rewarding thing on Twitch is like, I, I believe in sharing the love. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I be, like just what you said, the quality of Twitch, the healthiness of it. Like that's how Twitch stays relevant. Like it's important to share that love at the same time though. Absolutely. Okay, cool. So the, so Two practical things you shared, obviously, like follow, follow, lurk for lurk. Is there anything else on the practical side of things for someone who's new, uh, just starting out, that they should they should really focus on? I would say uh, just get to know people, man. Make uh, make every social you can, and don't necessarily just use your Twitter to say, "Hey, I'm going live." Like, actually interact with people's tweets, like like their tweets, comment at them, and like get to know them. I mean, eventually that rubs off. Eventually, you build. Even if you don't talk to the people a lot, that builds relationships. Like. Maybe someday they do come in your Twitch chat and you're like, oh my God, hey, like I recognize you from like Twitter, Instagram, like how you doing? Um, and, and networking, that's been my biggest upper, like just meeting people. And just, I think that's, it's a hard thing to do because networking, you don't, you come into it not knowing how to do it, right? Yeah. Sometimes you just want to DM people and be like, hey, uh, here's my Twitch stream, like come check me out. But like at the same time, like people may not like that a lot. Um and I just think building friendships is the most important thing. Absolutely. I would say, I would say, you know, like I said, interact with people, get to know them, support their content as well. Don't just be uh, I'm going live and that's it. Yeah. And there's a very fine line between that and like self-promoting and all that kind of stuff. It, yeah, it's, it's all about like really just how I look at it with networking is I'm, when I stop into somebody's stream, I'm trying to learn as much as I possibly can based on what they're doing and, and how they do things and, and see things differently from a new perspective. And when I do that, the byproduct of that is really like, I think growing friendships with people or growing or, or really like uh, becoming ingrained in their chat. Like I'm not going to stay in someone's stream that I hate 
who has like a lot of viewers. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because I just want to gain their viewership. Like honestly, I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to I'm going to find people who I really respect because I think they're going to be here for the long run and I want to learn from that. And so that's that's kind of that's even like a little piece of why I'm doing this because I don't think a lot of people either a have the time to do that or really like a lot of streamers get a chance to like talk like this and, and really in this kind of a setting. And so I think it's it's a really cool thing for um, people like yourself to be able to have this moment to really share either with your community. And I know you, you probably do with your community because you guys talk about like everything, which is awesome. <laughs> but I think it's also an opportunity for other people to, to see that um, outside of even both of our communities. And so I think when, when you, uh, yeah, when you self promo, it's gonna, it's gonna absolutely like basically like excommunicate you out of that community <laughs> very that quickly. Will probably never uh, talk like most of the time. They don't usually ever pay you any mind again. Type yeah, thing. exactly. Like for me, I, you pretty much like can see the people who are doing that. But when you see someone who's like actually trying to like become a part of the community and you, and then you find out they stream, you're like, Oh wow, this is actually really cool because they're, it's not like, not even if like they gift you subs or something like that, but it's more of just, okay, this person actually wants to be here and wants to learn how to kind of do this. And especially if they're new, I'm like, Oh, I want to support that like crazy. And so exactly dude. Okay. So, uh, really quick one to two mindset things, uh, for either new or people who are maybe even in decline, like how, how do you combat, um, I don't know, a bad day. How do you combat like kind of like the lower times on Twitch or, you know, maybe for somebody who's just starting out, they've got like two viewers cons consistently in their phone, you know, how do you keep going? How do you keep your energy level high? And, uh, yeah, what, what what makes you kind of a uh, tick on uh, that things? Yeah, I uh, I have uh, I guess me personally, I just have uh, whatever I do, I, I'm gonna give it my all type of mindset. Um, and it's just if you're not if you're putting in um, 60 percent effort, your chat's gonna see that. Yeah. So yeah. it's all about the way you present yourself and and what you're trying to build. Like I've told like my friends this too, who start to stream and they're not consistent. A, you got to stay consistent with it. And if, if it's something that you love and and that you really enjoy, like it's going to show like people can see that that love and that passion that you have for it. So it's just it's finding a balance of how to like what you said, like overcoming low viewership days and just putting your head down and saying, like, this is what I want, because I'll tell you right now, if you're if you are a, a outspoken person and you like to talk to people and you go out and you meet people on your social medias and you're connecting with people organically like you are you are going to grow on twitch that's and it, and it may take a year it may take six months two years but if you do that and keep your head down and just get through it like you are going to grow no matter at what pace you will go up and that's that's all there like just quitting and saying hey like i can't do this like if you're passionate about it stick with it that's what i would say yeah, it's it's something that I think a lot of people look at numbers, especially when they're when they're starting out, right? And it and it absolutely. It, it's it sounds like you're saying like like focus on the the things that you're doing, not on like the I don't know the numbers or or the outside like I guess like with the product, you know, like like or what what's happening after, you know. I think as a I mean as a small streamer, it took me so long. Like I would say my second tip or trick would be turn your viewer count off because. When you have that viewer count on and like we were talking about the highs and lows and you start to see those numbers dip, I mean, it doesn't matter who you are. If you see that number physically declining, like it, it gets to you. Yep. So when you, when you have that viewer count turned off and I mean, I'll, I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like I don't like click it and see where I'm at once in a while. Cause I do, but just having that turned off and realizing where you're at um, and just enjoying the moment and enjoying who you have in chat, enjoying the game. Like that, that's so important. It's so important. And um I would say along with that, like the people who do come in your chat and support you and like you don't like take, you know, 10 years to respond to them. Like try to actively engage with them and make them feel welcome and like make it a place that they want to be. Like try my, I guess my biggest thing that I do and I've always done is I'm just super engaging with chat and that helps me like tremendously. Do you uh, watch your VODs back by any chance? I do. I do. I will watch them back sometimes. Um, a lot of times just to get clips, but sometimes if I have a really good stream, I will see how I was and what I was doing that was working well and what people liked. Or if I had a bad stream, I'm like, why was my stream so slow this day? Like this is one of those things that you try to figure out. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, that's something that a lot of streamers don't do. And it's something that's very, uh, 
humbling. <laughs> it's very humbling to go back and like see how I, I always I always like to do like like maybe like the last thing I do in the day. I'll like just try to watch and see how long I can watch before I get bored. You know? And I'm like, okay, that was pretty quick. I need to figure that out. You know, like, like you're like, if I'm getting bored, then other people are for yeah, sure getting bad. bored. No, you know? good, yeah. And so I think uh, it's something that's very humbling, but I, I like to ask people that because it'll, it teaches you a lot in the beginning for sure. One of the hardest things to do is to keep an audience, man. Um, I mean, it's very like, even at like you or I, like you said, like you watch, your, you'll watch your own VOD back and be like, shit, like I probably wouldn't have stuck around either. I'm just like not saying anything or just finding those those little tweaks that you can do. It's also hard. I think one thing that people struggle with a lot, I don't know if you would agree on this, is like the type of game they play. Because um, I know a lot when I really first started streaming, I was really Googling like how to grow on Twitch. Yeah. And a lot of the like Reddit forums and things that I found would say like play a game with low viewers. And what you'll find there, like in my experience personally, every time I play a game with low viewers, like it does not positively reflect on me. Like I don't get many new people that come in and want to stay you, and hang out. I feel the same exact way. I feel the same exact like, way. Like, uh, I'm going to like Luigi's mansion. I'm going to try that out just to see how it goes. <laughs> but I mean, every game that I've played, I don't have new people coming in and wanting to hang out. Yeah. So I think people say it's hard to grow on a saturated game. Like would you say Fortnite's like your main game, like through your streaming career? I'd say, yeah. Yeah. That's definitely what's built my audience. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, like, it's I almost think it's easier like if you have good quality and like you have a catchy title like people are going to come through because there's thousands of people on that game so I wouldn't I guess what I would say is like anything you read on Google almost disregard because those guys like will tell you what works good in theory but it's very it's very hard to like because the people that are streaming those low viewer games are like you know like people who have a concurrent audience so it'll be like 100 viewers but they are holding like 80 of them those people are there to watch them so yeah like find a game that is not like oversatched like even i mean fortnite's a good game i guess to stream um but find something that like brings people in like a game that's popular i like popular games yeah that's and that's the hard thing right is like i I was even thinking about that recently i was like oh maybe if i play like a different game you know it'll it'll be better like but what you're doing is you're now like whatever you've built, even if you're like at the point that, that I'm at right now, like everything you've built has been on this and then you're expecting exactly. people to go over to here and that's not necessarily going to be, you know, it's not going to happen necessarily like where people just follow you everywhere. No matter how great you are, you're going to have some fall off and you got to just realize that. So if you do want to go to a different game or you want to go to a lower viewer game, just realize that it's going to take some other things on probably on some other social medias and you're going to have to become a little bit of an authority on that game. Like you're going to have to become like somebody who people want to watch on that game because you're kind of new to it now, you know? And so it's something, it's something that uh, if you are going to go that route. Yeah. I, I think just realize like if there's less viewers then there's less people to probably come to your stream anyways. Exactly. And so, so like for me with Fortnite, I don't actually think it's a bad thing to stream when you start out. I just yeah, think no you way. need to create a stream that people uh, want to stay at. And so Fortnite changed the game and streaming. It really like revolutionized streaming. Absolutely. And it, it's the same thing of my thought process on like other platforms. A lot of the times people switch a platform to because they think there's more discoverability. But the problem that's really there is actually their content is not like it's it's not like fresh. It's not anything that's new. It's not anything that's kind of different, you know. And so I always tell people like before you switch, try to do some things that are big and different and see if you have anything, any other growth and make sure you advertise them well. And so I, I think, yeah, that's normally the centerpiece of, of like what I see with people's growth or why people like, you know, oh, I went to like a lower of your game or I'm in a saturated game and that's all it is. Be careful it's when you not. look, when you look for excuses that are not your fault, that can be a big deal. Like, because you're not being honest with yourself and you're like, okay, was I sitting there like a zombie the whole time looking at the screen? Maybe, you know, <laughs> so. And, and some, like we, like we've been saying like the whole time, like sometimes it just will be slower and the ways that I've figured out to come out of a rut is like what I, what I said at the beginning of the interview is like, I just look for things that very little people are doing. And I kind of, you know, I, I, I always never agree with necessarily stealing content. Um, but I do agree with if you see something working for somebody, take that spin it and make it your own and incorporate it into yourself and just be unique. Like if you see something cool, don't just like steal it, like make it unique, because people will see that if it's not again, with the authenticity, if it's not like genuine and authentic, like, people are gonna be like, wow, I've seen this like a million other places. Like, yep. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Okay. Even like, yeah, go, Sorry, ahead, go, ahead. go ahead. No, no you, you go ahead. Say? Oh, no. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> okay, so um, any, I guess any other like tips that you think were kind of revolutionary for you or something that just, just changed the whole game? And then uh, after that, we'll kind of wrap up the whole tips and tricks area. And then... mm, revolutionary for me. Um, uh, in what aspect as far as like... I guess um, like if there's like a practical thing where, where you're like, hey, I, I added this one thing to my stream and people really connected with it and they're like, okay, I, we, this is like something that other people could do. Um, or it's like how you post on other social medias or yeah. Anything, anything along those sides? I uh, I am super, super huge on quality, right? So, like, there's a lot of people that you'll see on, like, YouTube or, uh, I don't know, they'll say, hey, like, you and you don't, right? You don't need this thousand, like, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of uh, equipment. But the better the better your, your equipment is, the better the visual quality, the audio quality, like, everything, people are going to want to come back, right? Um, and I, I like... Quality to me is like when I watch a streamer, I look for a quality stream. I like how do they interact with chat? How do their visuals look? Is their audio good? That like that's very important to me personally. Um, and even if you can't just like I'm not saying like wait, be like, oh, I can't start streaming because I don't have a super quality setup. Like take that money. If you're working a job, take that money you earn from Twitch and slowly upgrade over time. That's what I've been doing. Literally, like every couple of months I'll buy a new piece and add it to my setup. Like I, I went from a my first webcam I ever had was uh, a Logitech C615, and I paid. I literally gave a dude seven dollars for it off of Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> um, and then, then so like I got a, a good deal on a camera, and I picked up a, a mirrorless camera, and you know just upgraded over time. And I feel like that's one of the pe reasons people like my stream is because it looks very good and clean. Absolutely, perfect. Same, same I think with you too, dude. Yeah, I think quality is huge, man. Quality is like. And you can really hack some of the things that are even cheaper. Like I, my, my camera is like just a Logitech, but I've like kind of hacked some of the color on it and stuff like that to make it look a little bit better. Obviously really my, good. my goal is to get, you know, some, some sort of like DSLR or like mirrorless or whatever. But I think realistically, when you look at it, you're like, okay, funds are not there. So how can we make it work? You know? And so, um, perfect, man. I think that's a, that's a great tip. That's a really, really good tip. However you can up your quality, even slowly, it's little things make a, make a huge difference. Okay, uh, we're going to open up for, for questions. If anyone in chat has questions, uh, we can do that. We have a really good question already from Weasel. I think that's someone from, from you. Uh, but it, it says, what's the best thing to do when you don't have active chatters? The best thing to do when you don't have active chatters. Um, the best thing that I have found over that time for me personally is that's the best time. Like I opened up by saying like I do a lot of solos or random duos for, to, for the purposes of trying to... Um, keep as much energy in my chat as I can. Yeah. But when you, when, when you have, when you are not talking to anybody chat slow, you get to this point where you stop looking at chat or maybe you just don't talk because you don't want to talk to yourself. Best thing is to like find people to run with, like run squads or like run duos, whatever, anything to keep the stream, not quiet and like produce content. Then as you start having people come in, like you're going to have people starting to chat. They'll see that you're talking like whatever. I think the big thing is just keep the vibe and keep the energy up. Yeah. I, I did something uh, early on, where I, uh, I just pulled the audio from my stream and just listened to the audio and looked at how many dead spaces there was in the audio and look how much, like, like what, like how much, how much time did there go where I wasn't talking? That's super smart. And I, I think it's something that you, like people need to think about because basically we're like radio bro broadcasters, but with a video camera and like playing video games. And so realistically, like you're think about it a little bit more like you're a broadcaster. And so even if people are there or if they're not, broadcast and so talk about the game talk about things you're doing or if you're playing with friends you know like even if you're doing that put push to talk on so that you can talk to people like either talk to people in chat who come in or you can talk through what you're doing or what you're thinking about doing it, yeah. it, it's something that that you like it's gonna be really weird but when people stop by your chat you're gonna get this comment time and time again when you have lower viewership they're gonna be like why are there not more people here that's what people are going to start to say because they're like, mm. wow, you're, you're super entertaining. You're like somebody who's talking consistently. And, but when, when you stop by or, or even do this tonight, uh, if you guys are like newer streamers, stop by streamers, like streams, but do not stop by people who have viewers only stop by people who have like zero to like two viewers and see how many people in that, in that range are still talking and how many aren't most of what you're going to find is people are not talking 
And then when you get up to like the five viewer area, they're consistently, a lot of people are consistently talking and, and more you'll see it's like consistent broadcast. So it's, it's something to think about on that side of things. Um, if you're going to play with your friends, be careful because you might get distracted and just play with your friends and it'll just be like you're playing with, you know, with your buddies and no one's included in chat. But if you're doing that, turn on push talk and just, just broadcast talk. You know? I actually thought of one more thing. Yeah, th this was this was actually a really big. Uh, this was the very beginning of my stream, maybe a month in. Yeah, and this was a very big turning point for me. Um, I actually met this guy named Type One Nick um, on Twitter, and I and I was like, dang, this dude is really cool. Like he's funny, and I DM'd him, and I was we were talking a little bit, and I was like, how would you feel about doing a co stream sometime? So this was back when like airplane. This was like Christmas time with airplanes in Fortnite. Like this oh, is how long I missed airplanes was. actually. Yeah, dude. I actually do. I felt like they're great content, but yeah. And uh, <laughs> and and so me and Nick did a co stream together, and hey, that made it like a like a long time friend. I still talk to him like to this day, and he doesn't he hasn't been streaming because of his job, but like I still talk to him to this day. Um, I also met some of his community. He met some of my community. Yep. And that opens up like once you start meeting people. That opens up the door to so many other people, dude. Like, pe your community is going to go get to meet new, fresh content, and you're also going to get to meet some new content. Absolutely. So, yeah, meet people. All uh, right, we got, we got another question here. Um, how often would you both recommend streaming when starting? You go first. I, don't, I, I think everyone's got to kind of find it themselves, like how much they can stream and whatnot. I think a lot of people stream a lot, and then they don't really have like social medias at all. I found that like starting out, they haven't made like a whole brand. So if you don't have a whole brand made, like in terms of like logo and stuff like that, and you can get logos made for, you know, you can make your own logo on Canva if you want. But I think, I think it's like, if you don't have all that stuff, then basically what you don't have is you don't have a foundation. So you don't have a place for people to really be. So you don't, you don't have a place like what it, what it communicates to people is that you're not necessarily like serious about it. And it's not that you're not, it's just you're communicating that through not having those platforms even just set up. And it's not that you have to post like every single day on every single one, but just having some place for people to like really connect with you more and more. And so I think, I think for me, if you're going to stream like every single day for like 10 hours, make sure you use the other time of the day to really like start to, to craft those other things. And if you're streaming, if you're, no one's there, use that time to really start to create some clips that you can put on to like social medias and stuff like that. Realistically though, uh, you want to be careful to combat against burnout. You're going to be really excited, really stoked to stream, but make sure you're doing something that's maintainable. Uh, for me, I did not do that starting out and it worked out for me. Uh, I, I got a lot of growth really early, but I also set the precedence that I was going to be streaming every single day for, you know, eight hours a day to 10 hours a day. And that was just not maintainable for my own, uh, for my own sanity for a, for a while. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and for my wife. And so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's getting in trouble over there, dude. Yeah, and uh, so, and so that, I think that that would be kind of more of my. Yeah, I uh, I personally think like when I started, I think three days. I I think that you need to take three days, maybe even maximum, maximum or minimum, depending on what you're doing. What like what Nick said, like putting in the work on the outside platforms. Like take three days a week and say, hey, on these three days, I'm going to stream for three hours at this time, right? Creates consistency. Um, and you're also going to find people who are active at that time. So like people who are night owls or who are off work in the evenings and like to watch Twitch in the evenings. Um, and then make a Discord, like create your own Discord server, invite people to join into your Discord. That's a place you can post for going live. Also a place you can get to know your community better. So like I think Nick pretty much hit it spot on. Like don't burn yourself out and put and get discouraged because nobody's coming in there. Like take that opportunity to do these outside things and then slowly work your way into streaming more when you have an audience. Absolutely. Uh, we got, uh, we got, I know you're going to have to get going pretty soon here. So we'll do this last one here and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, but Waff leader says starting out, it may be tough to be consistent. Uh, how important is a consistent schedule? And would you say more streams or longer streams have a benefit over the other? If, if either. For me personally, consistency is huge um, because over the last like year, like year and a half, whatever, I've built uh, a community around people who are active at night. So when I do stream at night, my streams do really good. Like like set, I started like seven or eight, just depends on when I get done with class and stuff. But like I do, my streams typically do really well at those times. Now, if I go live at two in the afternoon or one, 
my streams are a little bit different because I don't have an audience that is active around that time. So I don't have like, as a smaller content creator, I've built everybody around the evening. So I personally, uh, consistency is huge with me. And I, I truly, truly believe in a stream schedule. Um, cause that, I mean, that's at least a point where like people know they can look for you if they start wanting to look for you. And, uh, as far as long streams, I used to not really stream that long ever. My friends used to make fun of me cause I would just do like three hour streams and be done while they were all grinding for like eight or nine hours. But it's really just up to you, man. If you're having fun and enjoying the game, like, yeah, stream, stream longer. But if you feel like you're forcing yourself and you're not having a good time, everybody's going to see that. And, uh, I mean, I think... I think starting off like three to four hours, three times a week is very obtainable. Very, very obtainable. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's super important to have a consistent schedule. I used to have, like when I was working and I and and streaming, it wasn't really consistent for me because my like my appointments for sales would be at different times and stuff like that. And so what I did was I started putting out a week schedule. So I would say like, hey, this week, this is when I'm going to be streaming, and yep. then oh, like my schedule changed the next week. Hey, this week, this is when I'm going to be streaming. I would try to keep it as consistent as possible on the days and whatnot. And now I just have like a consistent time that I start uh, and uh, and do that. In terms of like longer streams, I actually agree with with Larry on this. Like you don't need to stream for a long time. What you should do is do short streams that people shouldn't miss. So if you're going to do like a stream, do a short stream and you do like, hey, today we're trying to accomplish, like say you're streaming Fortnite. Today we're trying to accomplish like a no kill challenge or today we're trying to accomplish this and you hype that thing up on your social medias like crazy or your discord. That's another thing we haven't talked about. Make a discord, get a discord. It's like your email list. It's, it's a hundred percent important, but hype that those streams up as much as possible and make it so people can't miss it. But also you're making it shorter so that they're, you know, they, they can actually stay for for almost the whole thing. And then they're going to attribute you with a great time. And then that's when you're starting to, to really grow because they start to share that with friends that they watch streams with or whatever. So, yeah. And I also feel like too, um, like back to that whole thing with like keeping it fresh. Um, if you are streaming six days a week for 10 hours, like people are spending all that time with you that are coming in, they may really enjoy your channel, but not only are you getting burned out, but they're getting burned out and your content may be getting stale to them, which happens Absolutely. to everybody. Like I've, I've, personally been guilty of that to where I see high growth and I just grind, 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 and I don't find the correct balance. And it can be, that can be hurtful to you. Yeah. No, I mean, for me, when, once I real I've realized my content's gotten stale, it, it kind of hits you. Like it hits you pretty hard in the, in the, in the insecurities, man. Like it's like, Oh <laughs> shoot, I'm doing the same thing over and over again. And you don't really notice it until people aren't there, you know? <laughs> and so like, yeah, that's something for me, like even right now, that's something I'm dealing with where I'm like, okay, now I've got a really, like reverse engineer this thing to really do something different. And so, yeah, man, I, I, I appreciate you, man. I thank you so much for, for being here and, uh, and just answering these questions. I think this was really, really cool, man. I think this helps yeah, absolutely, a lot of people. Dude. It was great talking with you. Uh, so, so this is going to be, uh, most likely up on YouTube and all that kind of stuff. I don't, I think I might edit some of the parts and stuff like that and make it a little bit yeah. more like, like viewer friendly in terms of like length or I'll just yeah. give timestamps. But, um, Dude, yeah, I appreciate you uh, doing this, and thanks for being our first freaking interview, dude. For sure, brother. Thanks for having me on here, dude. Let's get some games sometime. Oh, for sure, dude. For, for sure. sure, dude. Toodles. All right, you guys have a good day.